I really want to heat things up with you and see how far you can take your creativity. So if you've ever been interested in adding colored glass to copper, this is the class for you. This class is designed for people who love to play with fire. And when I say play with fire, I mean play with fire safely. And I love that this class um, is available to you because for me, it's instant gratification with regard to jewelry making. You will be amazed at the results that you're able to have with just a small butane torch and a minimal amount of supplies. Many supplies that you probably already have in your own home. In our class today, we're actually going to learn a few different techniques. And all of these techniques can be combined with each other. Down here with our bracelet, we have an example of blends. And then over here on the neck board, uh, we have more blends, a scraffito technique. We also use rubber stamps as well as paper punches to create designs embedded into the glass. It's always safety first, creativity second in my classroom. And that's what I want to talk to you about right now. You can see I'm in my garb uh, for enameling. First and foremost, I have a pair of safety goggles whenever I'm firing with the torch. Whenever I'm sifting enamel and firing the enamel, it's important that I wear a dust mask as well. And finally, whenever I'm working with hot copper, I want to make sure that I'm actually using the tweezers to pick up the pieces and transfer them to the cooling surfaces. Now, in addition to these tools that I'd like you to use, I'd also like you to wash your hands throughout today's class so that you are getting rid of all of the glass residue that will inevit inevitably uh, wind up on your hands. I also would like you to not eat or drink while you're enameling, but if you do need food, then maybe put it in another room in the house and at the end of this experience, I'd love for you to take off those clothes, throw them in the dirty laundry, and take a nice long shower. It's well earned. And finally, you don't want to leave a permanent reminder of your class experience on your kitchen table or dining room table for that matter. So be sure to lay down a protective surface on what area, whatever area you might be working on. Hey, I want to also talk to you about some of the tools that we'll be using in today's class. Some of them are a little more specialized, and some of them you'll find in many parts of your house. After you've cleaned your metal, you are now ready to sift the enamel onto your copper. And these are some of the tools that you'll use for that process. The most important tool for this process is actually a dust mask. I also like to have a spoon on hand, dependent upon the type of enamel container that I'm using. Uh, it's better to actually transport your enamel from the container using a spoon as opposed to pouring it out into your sifting cup. And these are your sifting cups right here. Uh, they come in three different sizes, this being uh, the medium sized one. However, I prefer to use the smaller sifter cups for the enameling process. Once you have finished using your sifting cup uh, with the enamel inside, you'll need to clean them out, and that's what these brushes are here for. And you'll simply clean them out just like so, so that they're able to be used for the next application of enamel. To clean your copper before you're, you will enamel, you'll need a, a, a few supplies. And I have found that uh, this copper cleaner, which is actually for cookware, is an incredibly awesome cleaner for copper. It's called Penny Bright, and I'll give you a look at what's inside. It comes with a sponge, but you won't need anything like that. It's a creamy, gritty consistency. But this is actually how I clean my copper over here. I use an old plastic lid, because I don't like to be chained to the sink. So I can actually take this wherever I would like to in my house. I also use an old toothbrush, and I clean it within the lid area. So these are the tools that I use to punch holes into my metal, my copper uh, blanks. And there are two hole punches right here. Uh, we have a traditional handheld hole punch, and you can see how it operates. And then we have a two hole punch right over here. The hole punches that you'll use will, will be based on the gauge of your metal. I like this tool for a thinner gauge of copper. 
And for a thicker gauge copper, I like the two hole punch. And you can see that you get a different sized hole uh, depending upon uh, which side of the tool that you use. Should your copper have any kind of nib uh, on uh, after you've punched the hole, you can use a pair of wire cutters to actually remove that nib. And if it's really protruding from uh, the surface of the copper, you can actually file uh, the nib away. These are the tools that I like to use to actually transfer my project, my copper, uh, from the sifting surface to the trivet. And I have a traditional bent nose plier. It's an incredible tool and it has so many applications, even for enameling. And then I have a more traditional tool, the uh, locking tweezers. And you can use these to, as I said, transfer your copper from your sifting surface, but you also use it to remove it from the trivet after you've fired. You should use a tool whenever you're working with a hot piece of copper, and it can either be your bent nose plier or your tweezers. You can see I'm using a cheaper pair of bent nose pliers for the enameling process. You don't want to use Lindstrom's or really high-end uh, pliers for this particular process. You want to use something that can withstand the wear and tear of the enameling process. Once you have sifted your enamels, you're ready to actually transfer it to a stainless steel trivet. And these are examples of uh, different sizes. You can see uh, the difference between the two trivets. Uh, this one's been used and abused over here, whereas this one's brand new. Uh, the first time you use your trivet, you'll actually see discoloration and it's absolutely no problem whatsoever. These are three point star trivets. Uh, trivets come in a variety of sizes but you can see that they're quite small. If you look at my thumb, you can see how small they are. I prefer using a smaller trivet for this process because we are working on a smaller scale. There are a number of firing surfaces that you can use for torch enameling. And this is a very specialized tool uh, and it's one that you can use for many other applications. But it is a, a tripod and then we also have a kiln brick and these when uh, these combined uh, make a perfect surface for torch enameling. There are many other tools that you might be able to use and they very well might be around your house. Here we have a simple coffee can and a 4x4 four four, uh, tile which can be found at most hardware stores. And You can see how I've set my firing surface up using those two basic household items. The final firing surface for torch enameling, you might even find in your backyard. Here we have a simple brick. Uh, in order to use it as a firing surface, you do need to tip it on its side. And this brick is actually resting on a piece of stainless steel sheet that you can get at a hardware store. Or you might even opt to use an old cookie sheet. The stainless steel sheet, or even the cookie sheet that I've suggested that you use, should actually be used with each one of the firing surfaces dependent upon the one that you decide to use. The tool that you'll actually use to fire your enamel uh, is a blazer torch and I prefer the blazer torch for a number of reasons. It can be used for uh, many different applications from silver clay to fusing and then, then of course torch enameling. I also prefer using the blazer torch because of the housing. It's a metal housing uh, and it will stand up to the repeated use uh, with this technique. Now, in order for your torch to actually work, you're going to need a triple refined butane gas. And I always encourage my students to get the best gas that they can to prevent any clogging from happening with their torch. And of course, whenever you're working with a uh, torch, you need to be wearing a pair of safety goggles. Hey, when you're ready to design, chances are you're, you're going to have a number of these tools already in your home. And I can't wait to show you some of the things that you can do with rubber stamps, edging scissors, and paper punches. And I'll also show you how you can reuse the inserts from a magazine. So when you're ready to add enamel to your copper, you'll be able to select from a variety of colors. Now enamels right here are basically uh, powdered glass. And you can see over here I have my dust mask. And whenever you're working with your enamel or powdered glass, you want to make sure that you're wearing your safety mask. And you're wearing it while you're sifting, 
while you're pouring them into your sifting cup because they are ground glass and they do become airborne and you don't want to be breathing that in. Now when you're also working with the enamels, you should have a wet towel so that you're able to wipe off your hands and avoid touching your eyes as well. As you can see, the enamels come in a wide variety of colors and all of the enamels that we're working with today are opaque. So you will get a solid base of color. The colors are very true to what their names are. Great purple, marigold, alpine green. I'm sure you'll be pleasantly surprised with the outcome. Here we have some examples of finished projects uh, as well as uh, how they begin their lives. Uh, these copper blanks down here, there's a variety of shapes and a variety of gauges uh, for you to use. Your copper does need to be cleaned before you start the process. Over here we have some very basic designs. I call these blends. You can see there's three colors used in each one of these uh, components. Uh, over here we have something that's a little bit more elaborate but very sassy. And these are stamped designs. I'll be showing you how to do that uh, a little bit later. Down here we have a stenciled design. There's also an example of it right here. And these are uh, created using a paper punch. And then you have more examples of the blends. And down here is a final technique, a sgraffito, where you're simply just scratching through the enamel powder to give you a desi the desired look that you're uh, hoping for. So today we are making a variety of designs using enamel powders. And over here on our heart charm, we actually are using a triple blend. You can see all three colors. We'll continue that technique over here with the blue and the white. And then we'll add a little more oomph to it by putting in a stencil design, this dark starburst, blue starburst in the center. We'll come down to this design over here. It's a fully fused surface, which is the black. And then we'll add a stamped design using rubber stamps. And we'll pull in a edging scissor, scissors to actually uh, add this detail right here. We'll finish out our class today uh, learning the sgraffito technique to make this uh, festive star. The enamels that we're using today are lead free, making them so easy to work with. And the metal that we're working with today is copper. However, you can also use these enamels on fine silver. To begin the process, you actually need to clean your copper, and you can see this piece is very dirty. Uh, you might even notice that I've marked the copper with my hole punch tool. Don't worry about that, because you're actually going to end up covering it with glass. Now, we're going to be using our Penny Bright, and I've used uh, my toothbrush. And I'm using my plastic lid. Remember, you're going to need to actually punch your hole before you add your enamel because once the glass is on the surface of the copper you're not going to be able to punch that hole. As you can see the Penny Bright is doing an amazing job at removing uh, the grease uh, and the dirt and the grime from the copper and your copper needs to actually be immaculately clean so spend some extra time cleaning this. Your glass needs to fuse to a clean surface. If there's any dirt or grime left on the blank, your enamel potentially won't adhere or fuse to that part of the copper blank. Hey, and just so you know, you only need to clean one side of your copper. You will be cleaning the other side after your first fire. If you don't feel like using an old toothbrush uh, as your cleaning tool, you can actually, actually use uh, your finger and clean your copper right in the palm of your hand. The Penny Bright has a little bit of a grit to it. It's the citric acid, and that's what's helping clean your copper piece. If you have sensitivity in your hand, you might consider wearing some sort of plastic or latex glove. During the firing process, our enamel is actually going through a series of changes, and I wanted to highlight what's happening to the glass as you're working with it. The first stage right here 
is called the sugar coat stage. And you can see, and you'll actually be able to um, feel it yourself at home after the piece is cooled off, is a sugar coat stage. Over here, um, we have an orange peel stage. And it can be a little hard to see it uh, in the light, but as I tilt it, perhaps you can see that it resembles the peel of an orange, which is why it's called that. This is the stage that you're actually trying to get in all of your firings today. It's the final stage. It's a fully fused stage. The glass is nice and even. And over here, well, you've overdone it. And let me tell you what has happened with this particular piece. The uh, enamel is starting to pull back right here. You can see exposed copper. Uh, the dark parts are actually fire scale that's coming off of your project and they're embedded into the glass. And this discoloration right here, well, that's what happens when the flame actually reaches over and comes in contact with the top part of your design. Throughout today's class, you'll actually be firing from the underneath side of your project. Now, I'm getting my uh, wacky heart charm ready to enamel, and it will need to actually be hole punched. And I'm going to use a screw, screw down or two hole punch for that process because the metal is a little bit thicker. And uh, I believe this is 20 gauge, yes. So you'll want to use uh, the appropriate tool whenever you are punching holes into your metal. Here you can see I've punched the wacky heart. Here's the hole right up here. The first part of the process will be a counter enameling, and that's uh, highlighted over here. You can see I'm using a black counter enamel. Now, the counter enameling is an important part of the process because it will actually brace the front part of your design and it's the first part of the process and so it will be the first step uh, that we complete. Once you've cleaned your metal you want to make sure that there is no penny bright residue inside the hole because you don't want any moisture to come in contact with your dry enamel. So use a toothpick or a small piece of wire to clean out that hole. Before you sift onto your metal, you actually want to make sure that it's going to sit correctly on the trivet. Find the perfect placement for your metal so that during the firing process, it doesn't tip over. Hey, we're finally ready to counter enamel after cleaning and punching and picking out our copper pieces. So, I'm not that bored that I'm reading this magazine sheet. I'm actually using this as my sifting surface and you have to use a new magazine sheet for every color. So as opposed to using a full sheet, what I'm going to encourage you to do is actually rip it in half so you don't consume so much paper. Now as I said the magazine sheet will be used as our sifting surface. Now remember whenever you're sifting you should always be wearing a mask and I'm getting ready to put mine on right now. Now we're ready to counter enamel. And the counter enamel, remember, is the back side of your pendant. It's the part of the copper that you've cleaned. I use a black counter enamel because it doesn't actually show the uh, color change after it comes in contact with the flame. So I'm ready to sift, and I'm going to use my mesh sifter. And what you want to make sure is that you've actually cleaned out the brush from any other use, and then you're ready to sift. Tap to remove any excess enameling powder. Now as I enamel, I'll be moving my sifting cup in a circular formation. I'll also be scratching the cup. You want to have a nice even coat of the enamel on your surface. A good gauge to know how much enamel you've put on is to look at the hole. Once it's been filled, you know that you have a nice, even, thick layer of enamel. Remember, we are counter enameling the back side of your piece. Once you're done with your enamel, you actually want to add it back to your container. Now you are ready to transfer your piece to the stainless steel trivet. The easiest way to transfer your 
project to the stainless steel trivet is to always have your hole placed at 12 o'clock. That way, when it's covered with the layer of enamel, you know exactly where to find it. You use your locking tweezers, insert into the hole, carefully grab your piece and bring it to your stainless steel trivet. If you make a mistake or have an accident, don't worry, you can start the process all over again. It's entirely possible to counter enamel many different pieces all at once. And if you decide that you're going to do that, I encourage you to actually use a larger sifter, sifter cup. And in order to transfer the enameling powder to your cup, you should use a spoon. The application is the same as with the smaller sifter. You can see I have all of my clean copper pieces lined up and ready to sift. Again, you're also working in a circular motion and you are scratching the cup to release the powder. I also like using a plastic spoon. I avoid using a spoon that I'm going to eat with or serve food with. Before you begin using your torch, you should actually put all of your enamel away. So you'll simply empty your sifter cup and set it aside. Tap off your spoon and you will gently fold the paper so that all of the enamel slides right back into the cup. Remember, you should also be wearing your dust mask during this process. Now, unfortunately, you're not able to use this sheet of paper again because it has residue from the sifting process. So it will be discarded. Now you're actually ready to fire. And before you fire, there's a few things that you want to remember. First of all, you want to double check to make sure there is no enamel powder in your hole. If you fire with enamel powder in the hole, you will end up with glass in the hole. So double check, and if there's any in there, you can come in gently with a piece of wire or a small toothpick. The next thing that you want to be aware of is that you are working at temperatures exceeding 1500 degrees and approaching maybe 2000. So if you should have some sort of accident and burn yourself, you want to have a quenching bowl for your fingers or hands. And I've used a bottom portion of a two liter bottle as my quenching bowl. It's a great way to recycle plastic uh, and have a more eco-friendly uh, work area. I've got my torch ready to go and I'm also going to be putting on my uh, safety goggles as I get ready to fire. It's important that you are always wearing your safety goggles when you fire. Now you can see the setup right here but I want to talk a little bit more about that. You might notice that it resembles an upside down Y and in order for your torch to actually get in and fire your piece it needs to come up underneath uh, the project and I'll demonstrate over here. You're firing underneath not above. You're firing underneath your project and you're firing between the segments right here. As you can see, my trivet is actually positioned on the corner edge of my firing brick. And it's positioned in that way because it allows me to actually have my torch come up underneath it. If it's positioned all the way back here on the kiln brick, my torch flame will never reach that project. And remember, we are firing from underneath the project. We're taking the lights down a little lower so that you're actually able to see the process um, which is going to unfold in front of you. I'm getting my torch ready to fire and I want you to pay close attention to the uh, project. You'll ignite your torch and your flame should be about an inch long. Remember, you're firing directly underneath the piece and you're moving your torch in a circular formation, very similar to the way you applied your enameling powder. The enameling powder is beginning to go through its stages, infusing to the metal. And now I stopped firing. It's just beyond the orange peel stage and I want to stop right there because I will continue to fire this piece once I turn it over to work on the front side. I don't want to overfire my piece because that will ultimately ruin the glass and then ultimately ruin my design. Once you're done torch firing your piece, it will be extremely hot. It is very important that you use a tool to transfer your project from the trivet to a different work surface. As you can see, my copper piece is actually 
uh, full of fire scale now as a result of, of being hit by the torch flame. I can remove this fire scale using the penny bright and the old toothbrush. You will need to clean the fire scale in order to apply your next layer of enamel. Today I'm going to show you how to do a triple blend of colors. It's one of the easiest uh, enameling techniques and you're using one color for each sheet of magazine print. You don't want to contaminate any of your colors so you're always transferring your project from one clean sheet to the next. Let's begin with the first color. Using your sifter. You won't need that much so make sure to just use a little depending upon the size of your project. Now you'll notice I'm not moving in a circular mo motion anymore but I am making sure that all of my enameling layers are consistent. Now be sure to actually clean out the sifting cup or you can opt to have several different cups for several different colors. Now you're getting ready to move. Carefully transfer it over. And if you make a mistake, don't worry. You've just created a new blend and you can bag that up in a small baggie and use it for a future project or even as your counter enamel. Here I'm adding my second color and I think what makes these blends really successful is that the colors actually come together and they're slightly mixed. So don't worry about contaminating them on your project. I think that actually lends to the effect of a blend. Transferring to the next sheet. We're adding our last and final color. There's no right or wrong way to apply the design, the blended designs, because I think when all of the colors come together, the end result is um, stunning. So have fun with the uh, triple blends. You might even consider doing a, sink, uh, a double blend or uh, any number of blends. You might also consider just adding one single color your first time out. Don't be scared, we've turned the lights out so that you can actually see um, this process unfold. Now I'm getting ready to fire again. Remember I'm firing directly underneath my piece. In a circular formation your torch flame should be directly under your project. And because we're working with this wacky heart, you might need to move your torch so that you're able to get the entire piece heated to the appropriate temperature. Now remember copper is a great conductor of heat, so it will be carried throughout the entire piece. You can see that the enamel is slowly starting to fuse. Now it'll go through a few different stages as we've mentioned earlier. And the process takes a little bit longer at this time because now we're not only firing through a layer of glass but we're also firing through the, or through the copper itself. You'll also notice that the color of the enamel has completely changed. Reds, yellows, oranges, all of those uh, colors within that family tend to darken uh, with the heat of the torch. There's no reason to get concerned because as the project cools, your colors will come back to their true reality. As a reminder, what we're looking for in the surface of the glass, the enamel is going through those stages that I mentioned earlier. It's moving from a grainy or a sugar coat to an orange peel look and it ultimately will become fully fused to the surface. Again, it takes a few minutes longer to fuse to the glass or fuse to the metal just based on some of the situations we've created. And if you're working in a semi-darkened room, you'll actually be able to see the process a little bit better. We've turned the lights off completely and it's not recommended for you to do this at home but I did want to give you an idea of what this piece looks like when it's completely glowing. If you are working in a semi-darkened room, you should be able to see that. 
My project appears to be done, but as I mentioned earlier, the color uh, needs to come down in order for me to see the true blend. Right now it looks like two different colors, but I know that I have used three, and as it cools down, I will be able to actually see all three colors. Now, the texture of this piece uh, is not as smooth as I would like. I can completely refire this piece and reposition the trivet very carefully. Use your tools in order to do this because much like the piece, the trivet will be extremely hot. Do you see how I've used my tweezers to turn the trivet around? Because I want to concentrate the, my flame right here and try and take this color down here from orange peel to a fully fused surface. Let's try that again. Remember, you always have your quenching bowl handy. Just in case you should accidentally burn yourself, you want to be able to immediately cool your burn. One of the things I want to remind you of is that you're firing the piece and not the trivet. Many people make the mistake of just simply putting the flame underneath their project and they're actually firing the trivet and not the copper project. As a rule, you're always firing from underneath the project. The flame will actually degrade the colors and cause them to alter. So you're never firing from above the project. After this piece is finished firing, I'll want to show you the back side, the counter enamel of the piece, and you can see the change uh, in the black counter enamel that I put on earlier. What I want to show you here right now is how the flame will interact with your glass. And here's the heart that we just uh, fired. Now it's very difficult to see any uh, degrading or any altering of the color on the black, which is why I suggest that you use the black enamel for your counter enamel. Over here, you can actually see that I've used Daphne Blue. Now I'm going to say that I think Daphne Blue looks wonderful when the flame comes in contact with it. And in some cases you'll find that many of the colors actually take on a very unusual characteristic. So you might want to experiment with different colored counter enamels. If, however, you don't care what it looks like, I always will suggest that you use black as your counter enamel. My pieces have cooled off. Uh, here's the heart that I was just working with, and here's another version using a different piece of copper. Uh, and both of them have those blends that I was talking about earlier. Now, I happen to like the rim of fire scale that is actually uh, surrounding each of these pieces. But it's easily removed with an emery board tool. And how you'll remove the fire scale from your piece is to gently rub the emery board around the surface. And you're only trying to remove the fire scale from the edge of your project. But as I said, I tend to like the look of fire scale, particularly with these colors. The warm colors really look well with this. Now the next step I could say I want to glam these up a little bit more by adding some extra details and I can certainly come back in and fire these pieces again. And that is what I'm going to show you how to do next. Now I'm going to show you how to enhance some of the designs that you've already produced. Here we have an example of a triple blend, very pretty blue, and I'm going to actually show you how to add a stenciled design to the surface of that glass. Over here we have a simple fused black surface, and I'm going to show you how to add a design using a very specific tool. For our stencil design, we're actually going to use a paper punch. Here's your stencil. You want to make sure that it sits nicely on top of your glass. If it doesn't sit evenly, you might have to tear it down to size it appropriately. Now it's ready to be sifted. You'll need just a little bit of enameling powder and you want to sift directly over your design. Now you'll carefully remove the 
stencil with a pair of tweezers, you want to lift up so that you don't disturb your design. This piece is now ready to be fired. Another way to add a, a unique design to your finished glass is to use uh, edging scissors uh, that you might have if you are a scrapbooker. And you'll use the card again, and that will create uh, a border uh, for you to use. It's very similar to the stenciling technique uh, that I just showed you. Again, you want to make sure that it's sized to the project that you're working with. So if there's any kind of overhang, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you're sizing it appropriately so that the project, or rather the paper, is resting evenly on uh, your glass. You want to add your stencil over your project and sift. I'm holding my template in place. If you want to add multiple colors to a project, you will fire it each time you add a new color. I've set both of them up on the kiln brick, although I will fire them one at a time. Here are our stenciled pieces that I have just finished firing. What I want you to pay close attention to is the difference in size. This particular piece, our little blue uh, piece with the starburst design, it actually didn't take as long to fire and fuse as this piece did. So I want you to be patient while you're firing your glass because larger pieces will take a significant amount of time, more so than a smaller design. And I also want you to concentrate your flame under your project. And I don't want you to think that by moving my torch faster that that's going to influence the glass to melt. It actually does quite the opposite. You want a nice consistent heat underneath your project area, allowing all of your glass to heat up and melt and flow into place. Okay gang, now we can actually take this design even further. And what I'm going to do is now stamp a design into the glass. Now I'm not going to use a hammer, I'm actually going to use a rubber stamp and a regular stamping pad to add ink to the surface of a fully fused glass piece. The ink is going to act as an adhesive holding my glass powder into place. Let's watch this. Now I like to stamp with my stamp up, facing up towards me so I can see where I'm going to be placing it. Firm compression. You want to work quickly so that your adhesive, the ink pad, ink does not dry. Now you'll just grab your project and tap off. Now remember where you see the marigold color you will actually see that in the glass. If you'd like to remove it use a fine paintbrush to remove that color. Our design is really looking great right now and it hasn't even been fired yet. Sometimes the sheen of the color on top of a darker color is a wonderful contrast. This is ready to be fired. I'm now going to show you how to create a sgraffito look. And sgraffito is Italian for a uh, scratch and uh, what I'm working on is actually a fully fused surface. So uh, this is the last part of a design. You'll see I've already got my counter enamel right here and I have the front part of my charm uh, fully fused to the surface. Now you'll notice I'm always brushing away the enamel from the connection point where the uh, ring is and you just use a small brush to do that. Now over here I just want to draw your attention to that. There is a little bit of exposed copper over here and that's okay because I'm going to completely cover this with uh, a nice white enamel and then scratch parts of it away. The sgraffito look. I want it just a little bit more. 
and I'm really paying attention to that little tip right there. There we go. Now, remember I wanted you to remove the enamel from the ring. Perfect. Now I'll use a piece of wire as my scratching tool. You could also use a small toothpick if you would like or your tweezers. It ultimately depends on the size of your charm, what kind of tool that you're going to use, as well as how large of a scratch you want to have. And I like to scratch away from the center. And now this project is ready to be fired. If you want a bolder design, you can make your lines a little bit more pronounced. The thing to remember with enameling is that you should have fun with the designs and know that you can always come back to it again and again. So don't be afraid to experiment. I want to share some of my hot tips with you and I bet some of you have some questions out there and of course I've got some answers. Do you have to enamel both sides of your pendant? Well, yes you do. And I encourage people to enamel both sides of their pendant because the back side, which is referred to as the counter enamel, helps to brace the front side of your pendant. Now there are some people who opt not to do that, but as your teacher today, I would encourage you to add two sides to any project that you're creating. Can I quench the project to cool it down so I can work with it faster? No. And the reason I don't want you to quench it is because your project will be incredibly hot, almost 1500 to 1700 degrees. If you quench your project when it's that hot, you will thermal shock the glass right off your project, ultimately ruining it. My colors are really dark when I'm firing them. Did I do something wrong? No, you did not do anything wrong. In fact, some colors such as orange, yellow, and red become darker with the heat of the flame. All you need to do is allow it to cool and the true color will show itself. My enamel is too thin. Can I add more after I've fired my piece? Yes, you can actually add more enamel. What I would always encourage you to do is to make sure that there are no fire scale flakes around the edge of your piece so that they don't become embedded in the new enamel that you're applying. You will need to heat up both the old layer of enamel and the new layer of enamel to make sure that they all become one. One of the things I want you to remember when you're firing your pieces is that if you stop midway during a firing process, you might risk that the enamel as it cools and is not fully fused to the metal pops off during the process. So always, once you start, continue until the metal or until the glass has gone through all of the stages. One of the things I like to tell my students to do before they do anything to their copper piece is to make sure that it actually fits on the trivet that you're using. There's nothing worse than having your trivet fall off during the firing process. So before you clean it, before you punch it, put it on your trivet to make sure that it is stable and secure. Before you fire your piece, make sure that the hole that you've punched into your piece is free and clear of any of the enameling powders. Once it's fused inside the hole, you will not be able to remove it. And can you punch more than one hole? Yes, of course. In fact, I encourage you to play with the designs and punch as many as you would like. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope you had a great time learning how to torch enamel. I know I had a great time teaching you how to do it. And I hope you discovered that instant gratification that I was talking about earlier.